practice with me is on the glitch. A glitch happens when all of your fingers moving from one note to another don't all go down at the same time. All our finger muscles are not created equal. So some of them go down faster, some of them are slower, some of them go down harder, some of them go down lighter. And what we have to do as flutists is to teach them all to do the same thing at the same time. And that's not always easy. And it doesn't always come just from doing our regular scales and uh, our other types of exercises that we're, we're doing um, arpeggios and all those types of things. So let's practice today on some very interesting uh, ways of working on the glitch. Glitches in general can occur between any notes. Now, um, I like to start off with my scales in thirds. And if I start off with a C scale in thirds and I go through all the keys. So I do C scale in thirds, a C sharp scale in thirds, a D scale in thirds, and all the way up. I will start hearing where some glitches happen. And when I hear them happen, then I'm going to work on them. Now, some of my scales are going pretty well right now. My fingers are, are warmed up and uh, I've worked on these. So if you're practicing with me and we're doing a C scale in thirds, you might hear that there's a glitch that's happening somewhere earlier than where mine are. And that's fine. Just say, oh, there's a glitch and let me now work on that. If you're still wondering, okay, what, what's a glitch? Let me just play some notorious places for glitches is say an E high E flat. So three ledger lines, E flat uh, to a C. Um, let me see if that happens. Here's a glitch. It really pops in between. It's that sound that's happening in between and it's all my fingers. My thumb is not coming off this going from my high E flat, which is everything down to C, which has just one finger down and, and of course your E flat pinky. Uh, and all of them are not happening at the same time. Now I can work on that. And really concentrate on what fingers are moving too slowly or what fingers are moving too fast and figure that out. Uh, but I will show you that when we come to one. So let's start with a C scale in thirds and I'm just going to do a C scale in thirds all the way up. But if you want to have uh, music to look at, this book is a great book to have. And we're going to continue and look at scales in fourths, scales in fifths, and they continue scales in sixths, sevenths, and octaves. So this is a great book to work on glitches. And I'll show you how that works. So in the book, if you take line one, which is a C scale in thirds, uh, the highest note it reaches is your third octave B. It doesn't, for some reason, go into a high C, but that's okay. We'll take a look at that. Where your glitches are probably going to happen are in that third octave. So probably when I get there, I'll show you a glitch and we'll work on it. I'll show you my method for working on it, which is no, there's, there's no elixir that's going to make it all better instantaneously. It's a long laborious process. So when you work on glitches, you have to do them in little bits of time. So let's start off with your scales in thirds here. So we're just going to play it fairly slowly and uh, you're just going to listen because if you play it slowly, you can hear what's happening in between your notes. So here we go with your low C. Let's put it on the page where it starts here. And now right there can be, depending on my fingers, now got a little bit cold in this environment here, uh, between your D and your F, your D with your pinky up to your F. And both of these two fingers, uh, they don't always work equally together. So let me listen to that and see if there's a glitch. <laughs> So if I do it really carefully, I'm listening to see, and I'm also concentrating on those two fingers. The more I concentrate on them, the more they're going to work in tandem and come up at the same time. 
Sometimes fixing a glitch, it's a matter of concentration. So let's try D to F and keep going. Now stop there a second because whenever you go from uh, one finger down to a whole bunch of fingers down, then you often have problems. So if we go from a B to a D, I'm just going to do that and say, hmm, do I hear any? Back and forth, nice and slow. Your first finger can often be off from the rest of them, this F finger here. So really concentrate going from your B to D and making those all move at the same time. Uh, you want to listen, just listen carefully, and now let's play it. B to D, back and forth. Um, if you feel like they aren't all going down at the same time, you want to isolate what finger is causing the problem and then make your mind fixate on that finger. Just think about it. Think about it moving in tandem, just gently going down. Also something to think about is don't let your fingers pop. Don't make them jam down, make a loud noise. This is gentle, but not slow. I think this first finger was a little late that time. Also, if I, going from a D back down to B, if I pop that, it's also, it's not a glitch, it's a pop, and it's also not pleasant. So I, I want to make the same speed, because we can't always play slowly. So I want them all to work together, slowly, D to B. When I feel like that's going, I'm going to move on. So uh, I think often our third finger here, our D finger, is a culprit. So if you're having problems, concentrate on him and see if that fixes that problem. Often you won't fix it in a day. It's going to take a long time over a period of days. Uh, so don't belabor it. Try it for a while and then move on. So we're going to start on that B to D and keep going. to D again here. It's a little tricky. I'll do it again. Now you could stop there and just do your thirds back down and work your way up into that third octave. Let's go a little bit farther because the exercise in the book goes farther. Uh, remember, anytime you start, you hear a glitch, and it, it will probably be not where I'm having my glitches, uh, stop and just work on those. Just going back and forth and isolating the finger so you really know what finger is slow, what finger is fast, and are you hitting too hard? Are you hitting too hard on them? Because that, that causes it as well. So here we go. We're going to start on high C and we're going to keep going up. Then there's a big one right there. So let's do that D to F. And I know for sure that it's the combination of my F finger and then my middle finger coming up. It's those two that are not acting at the same time. So I'm going to concentrate on those and go back and forth. And just that, me thinking about those two working together, fixed it. It may take longer for you, and that's fine. And 
don't forget to go backwards. So you're not only going up D to F, but F back down to D. That's equally hard. Let's keep moving. And in this book, the uh, B is as high as it goes. Now you can keep going A to high C and then work your way back down. The book only goes A, it goes back to A and B. So we'll do that and then we'll work our way down. Now most likely when you're going A to B, B back down to G, you're going to have a glitch there. Let's just do that pi B to G. There, I, I evened it out a little bit. It came out nicer. Work on that. It's going to happen. Let's start high B and continue back down. And there's my C to D. That was a little glitchy. There, I fixed it. I'll go uh, C to D again and keep going down. If you don't have a low B, you can end by just doing C and then go to D and back to C. So do not be fooled just because you got it at that tempo and you worked it out that the minute you go fast, it's all going to be great. Nope, you have to then do it again and go a little bit faster and see if you can iron out the kinks at that tempo. Um, and you can continue to that or you can say, you know what, at that tempo I'm just going to keep going down and now I'm going to do C sharp. So continue through that because the fun is only beginning. I like to take that C in thirds and then turn the page, a couple pages actually, and do, they now have your scales and force. So now we practice our scales and force and that creates whole new glitches that you ever, never even knew about. So let's just try a little bit of that and see what happens. I heard a tiny bit of a one between F and B. My F finger didn't go up in time. Let's try that again. There, all it did was I needed to concentrate on it. So if it's happening for you, work at it a little bit, back and forth. I'll start F to B. Right there is a glitch. 
between C and E again, same place, same place. There we go. So I'll continue C to E and down. I will continue C and E down again. That is my approach to working on glitches. Now, if I were you, I would then turn a couple of pages and do your scales in fifths, and then do your scales in sixths. Just keep it in C major for a while. Just work on the glitches there. Tomorrow, you start with C sharp and work on all the glitches all the way up those scales. It's a perfect way to work on glitches. Then when you're looking at a solo and you hear some glitches there, your ear will be tuned to hearing those glitches a little bit more. And then you'll be able to work on them and know how to work on them, just going back and forth, isolating the finger that's causing the problem, and uh, then continuing on. You find lots of glitches because our composers are always composing us nice, wonderful runs that have a lot of glitch problems in it, but working them out in one spot can help actually help you in another spot. So have fun working on your glitches. Remember that those are the kinds of things that separate the amateur from the professional and makes you sound flawless when you're playing. So work on them. Be patient. They are tedious. It takes a lot of work and it's a lot of concentrated work, but be patient and have fun.